SpongeBob SquarePants. You all know this guy, right? This was one of my favorite shows growing up as a kid, but I kind of fell out of it sometime around high school. Say what you will about the state of the show nowadays, but whenever I'm feeling nostalgic, I'll watch a handful of episodes from the first three seasons. Even the fourth season isn't that bad. I'm surprised they still hold up, even to still be running on TV to this very day. The first movie is even one of my favorites, because its story really does feel like it belongs in a movie. UNLIKE! I'll talk about this Alaskan bullworm another day. And to get this out of the way now, I have no interest in seeing Sponge on the run. If you ask me what my favorite Spongebob game is, like everybody else, it's gotta be Battle for Bikini Bottom. I played this game so much as a kid on my PS2, it became one of my favorites. Which is why I was surprised to find out last E3 that the game was getting a remake. Seriously, Banjo-Kazooie can't get a remake, but Spongebob can? Even after Smash, the Baron Bird just can't catch a break, can they? Funny thing is, I was already planning on doing an episode for this game long before Rehydrated was announced. So I guess as fate would have it, this will be the version I'm reviewing for today's episode. Keep in mind, I will review this game with the assumption that you've never played the original before. I also still have my original copy from my PS2 days, but I didn't feel like getting footage from the original for the sake of comparison. Now then, are you ready kids? Let's find out if this game is worthy of being one of the best licensed games ever made. This is Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom. So, what's the story here? Basically, Plankton creates an army of robots that go haywire, and you need to stop them. That's it. That, that's the whole story. I mean, it gets the job done, I suppose. Oh, how shellfish of you! Really? Anyway, after exploring Spongebob's house, collecting our first golden spatula, and annoying Squidward... Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward. One eternity later... Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward! Hey Squidward. We're off to Jellyfish Fields. I already feel like a kid again playing this for the first time. This is gonna be amazing! Oh. Oh. All right, I'll be the one to say it. Unreal Engine and Nintendo hardware don't go well together. Uh, let's talk about SpongeBob's moveset. Using the power of... Imagination! SpongeBob has a variety of bubble-themed attacks. Swinging his bubble wand around is a standard attack, but he can also launch himself upward with a bubble viking helmet and perform a ground slam with bubble feet. You'll gain two more bubble abilities as you progress through the game. The Bubble Torpedo, and the Bubble Bull. Oh, and he can wall jump too, which has been substantially improved and rehydrated. Great work, guys! Now, you might think that Spongebob is the only character you can play as in this game, right? <laughs> Wrong! But you also get to play as Patrick and Sandy. Patrick's basic attacks revolve around his belly. When he's in the air, he can execute a butt slam with one jump, or a belly flop when double jumping. The belly flop is my favorite attack to use, mostly for this line alone. Oh, hey, my back feels better! Patrick's unique gimmick from Spongebob is that he can throw things, whether it be tiki's, one watermelon oh, fresh from the manure field, ice cubes that can freeze goo and be safe to walk on, makes sense given that Spongebob and Patrick can't swim, and even the robots themselves if you're able to stun them first. Pretty sparkly thingy. Oh! Uh, this is gonna be one of those games, isn't it? As for Sandy, she's the most unique character to play as, honestly. Not only using her famous KARATE for her basic attacks, but her lasso has the best uses in her movement. She can lasso tikis, enemies when grounded or in the air, swing from floating Texas symbols, and best of all, glide in the air. I'm serious when I say Sandy has the best aerial movement in the game. It's no wonder she's everyone's favorite character to play as. SpongeBob, what the hell is going on with your back? Scattered throughout Bikini Bottom are the previously mentioned golden spatulas. Shing. Sparkle, sparkle. Golden spatulas are used to progress through the game, acting as an equivalent to Mario 64's Power Stars. But of course, as a collectathon, it's not the only thing you need to collect. There's also shiny objects that act as your currency. How long do you think it took him to come up with that name? Socks from Patrick's collection, even though he doesn't wear socks, don't question it. And pairs of underwear that act as your health meter. 
and if you find golden underwear, it will increase said health meter. Eh, I honestly would have preferred Krabby Patties instead, like in the movie game. But SpongeBob's underwear is just as funny. Not to mention, in hindsight, eating six burgers in one sitting like that would go right to your thighs. My thighs? And then you blow up! In terms of levels, there's Jellyfish Fields, Goo Lagoon, Sand Mountain, Rock Bottom, Kelp Forest, and plenty others too. Lots of recognizable locations from the show are encouraged for exploration. Some of their designs vary from linear to sandbox to even sliding down slopes, which are really a lot more fun than you think. Either way, there's enough variety within the levels to keep you hooked. Boo! You stink! Even character interactions were not skimmed over, with mostly unique dialogue woven together by quality writing from the show's staff. I think I have fudge in my pants. Well, as far as 2003 standards go. References from the show should not be easy to miss. Believe me, they are everywhere. Especially in the Rock Bottom Museum. Look, it's old, bold, and fresh! More like, belongs in the trash! <laughs> if you're a fan of the show, I think there'll be enough to put a smile on your face. I see meme culture is still alive and well. There's even some boss battles too. They're not challenging or hard, but they're just as fun. Did I mention how much fun this game is yet? What? You think I'm gonna play the fun song? Pfft, screw that, it's not worth it for a copyright strike. Golden spatulas can also be earned in the central hub, whether scattered around or given to you by Patrick or Mr. Krabs. For Patrick, he'll give you a golden spatula for every 10 socks you find. Although this is the same guy who can't tell the difference between a spatula, a back scratcher, and a turkey baster. For every 10 socks you bring back to me, I'll give you a golden turkey baster. You mean spatula? Bless you. For Mr. Krabs, you can buy spatulas from him by training a certain amount of shiny objects. I think we have more than enough already, so let's go talk to old man Eugene and buy our first spatula from him. SpongeBob, this flapping robot crisis is making the Krusty Krab lose money like a sinking ship. No money means no more Krusty Krab. No more Krusty Krab means no more fry cooking for you. Okay, I think now might be a good time to bring up the downsides to this game. As good as Battle for Bikini Bottom is, it does have its share of problems. Let's start with the obvious one, Mr. Krabs and Mermaid Man's voices. Normally both of these characters are voiced respectively by the legendary Clancy Brown and the late Ernest... Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his last name because I will butcher it if I do. I'll just call him Ernest B. So in this game, they're both voiced instead by somebody named Joe White. Why was this? Well, in Brown's case, he turned down the role because, in the most hilarious irony, he wouldn't get paid enough. But as for Ernest B? I really can't find anything on why he didn't reprise his role as Mermaid Man. So what's the verdict for White? Phew! You had me worried there for a bit, boy. Worried for me money, of course! Ah! <laughs> Is there evil about? Ah, good, it's good, and, um, pudding. Neptune, bless him. At least he's trying. Kelp Forest is not a fan favorite level. In the original game, it's way too dark to see anything, much to the point of having to tint your TV to a higher setting. I don't think it was that dark personally, so I never really had a problem with it. Luckily, in Rehydrated with its vibrant color palette, Kelp Forest is much better for the eyes. However, I'll admit, the cave section where you have to find Barnacle Boy's crystals is kind of repetitive, especially when you have to constantly switch between SpongeBob and Patrick. And don't even get me started on Mermaid Man's Kelp Slide Challenge! But once you go through it enough times and know what you're doing, it's not so bad when you get the hang of it. Just be careful. Speaking of Mermaid Man, the rolling ball puzzle in the Mermalayer. It really is as tricky as everyone says it is. But tricky does not mean impossible. You can do it. I certainly can after a few tries. I'm improving. For me though, the worst part about this game is grinding for shiny objects. For Mr. Krabs, it's not that bad. In fact, here's a pro tip. Save up every shiny object you can find in the game, and don't spend any unless you absolutely have to. Then, once you have enough, return to Mr. Krabs and buy every spatula he has. If you still don't have enough, return to a level or two, collect enough shiny objects, and then buy the last few spatulas from him. Not a big deal. The movie theater, however, is a whole nother story. 
You see, the theater is a place where you can see some concept art for the game, which is usually a nice treat for completing the game. But only if you complete the game. If you go inside before getting all the spatulas, all you're gonna get is in-game screenshots. Well, that was a ripoff. The worst part is that you need 40,000 shiny objects to get in. That means you need to play through all the levels again at least twice in a row to get the amount you need. <sighs> Whether it's worth it or not, that's up to you. But now, we address the elephant in the room. Hey, you got any peanuts? Not you! Get out of here! I'm talking about the problem with Rehydrated as a whole. The original game was developed by Heavy Iron Studios, which was a relatively new game development studio at the time. Rehydrated was developed this time by Austrian game company called Purple Lamp Studios. Huh. History repeats itself. During the development of Rehydrated, the studio made it very clear that they love this game as much as we do, but they wanted to play it safe so that fans of the game wouldn't feel offended by so many changes. That's understandable. And there's nothing wrong with playing it safe, not at all. But I do think that some changes could have benefited from this game. I'll get to that in a minute. When Rehydrated released to the public, it was demolished by critics calling it a bad remake compared to Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon. While I get where they're coming from, I don't think all this hate is warranted. So why does Rehydrated feel undercooked? Well, this is because the slimy orange overlords at Nickelodeon wanted the game to coincide with the release of Sponge on the Run, giving Purple Lamp no resources or time at all to update the game to the best it can be. Unfortunately, due to the current state of the world right now, the movie has been delayed to next year and will be made exclusively for the CBS All Access streaming service. This really screwed over Purple Lamp, as they easily could have delayed the game alongside with the movie. Hey, wait a minute! Why is the movie getting delayed if you're just gonna make it VOD anyway? We could've just watched it right now! This doesn't make any sense at all! Don't ask questions you aren't prepared to handle the answer to! Okay, Mrs. Puff, I'm sorry. Okay, one of the new features in Rehydrated that I wanted to show off for this video is the new multiplayer horde mode. But as you can see, my internet connection isn't the most stable. Honestly, I don't think I'm missing out. Multiplayer modes never really grabbed me, mostly because I was more interested in the main campaign. That and I didn't have any friends to play with. This one is unique because it includes cut content from the original game, such as a robot Squidward boss battle and Patrick's original dream level made of all kinds of desserts. I would have preferred these to be included in the main story instead, but at least they're being acknowledged rather than ignored. So obviously, Rehydrated is littered with problems. And glitches. I can tell this game is gonna get a lot of patches. I mean, even if the development of this game sounds tragic, the end result in my opinion is worth it. Because it's still the same great game we all know and love, with a few new bells and whistles. But. I still can't help but think about what Purple Lamp could have included in Rehydrated to make this a better experience. So while I can, I'd like to share my top 5 new features that should be in Rehydrated. Spoiler alert, most of these will come from the movie game. Number 5. Costumes. In the movie game, there were treasure chests scattered around as collectibles. They could unlock concept art, trailers for the movie, soundboards, for some reason, and of course, costumes. When I played the game, I always liked running around as Spongebob in his Mermaid Man costume. Seeing this in Battle for Bikini Bottom would have been amazing. Number 4. Upgrades Also from the movie game, dumbbells are your replacement for shiny objects. You can use these to upgrade any of Spongebob or Patrick's attacks. For instance, you can upgrade Spongebob's karate gloves to be made of steel which will reflect projectiles. Imagine the tartar sauce robot shooting at you and reflecting the projectiles right back at him. Tell me that's not cool. Number 3. New Levels This one is a given. There is concept art for a cut level in the original game based on Glove World. It makes sense why they didn't put it in the game, because we already have the Goo Lagoon Pier. But that's not enough. We need the full theme park experience! Plus, it'd be the perfect spot for the Robot Squidward boss battle. Need I mention Patrick's Ice Cream Dream level again? In fact, let's have more levels from, once again, the movie game. Like Goofy Goober's Party Boat, and the Thug Tug, and Call It A Day. Number 2. Tag Team Co-op And I'm not talking about the multiplayer horde mode, I'm talking about you and a friend playing through the main story together. Here's how it works. When you go to a bus stop, you can either switch characters if you're playing by yourself, 
or you can have a second player join in as the other character. And if you're fighting robots together, you can both perform dual combo attacks depending on the character you're playing as. This isn't an unprecedented idea either. Lots of games nowadays do this, and I don't see why Battle for Bikini Bottom shouldn't do this either. And finally, the number one feature that should be in Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated is... Clancy Brown is Mr. Krabs. Come on, Nickelodeon, give the man however much he wants already. You have more than enough in your budget, dammit! And now for the million dollar question to wrap up this episode. Which version of Battle for Bikini Bottom do I like the most? Honestly, I don't really have a preference. Even though I'm nostalgic for this game, the original was jank as all hell. But I guess that's the charm of a game from the early 2000s. Rehydrated has much better graphics, but at the cost of some performance. Honestly, Rehydrated could have just been a port of the original for the Switch and I would have been happy with just that. I guess what I'm trying to say is, it doesn't matter which console generation you're playing on. Battle for Bikini Bottom is in fact a good game, and definitely worthy of being one of the best licensed games ever made. If you're a fan of Spongebob, or just looking for a game for your kids to play, Battle for Bikini Bottom is the game for you and me! However, I recommend getting it for either Xbox One, PS4, or PC. I only got the Switch version because, admittedly, it's the only modern console I have. That's right. Most of these are fake. But if I were forced to pick a version, I would go with Rehydrated. Yeah, it's not the best remake, but the critics' backlash against it is really uncalled for. And honestly, I think it's the best way to experience the game nowadays for old or new players. I don't think there's really any reason to go back to the original unless you're feeling nostalgic. If you don't want to shell out the cash for a rare copy of the original on eBay, I recommend getting Rehydrated. It's more easy to find, slightly cheaper, and I guarantee you'll have a fun time. Seriously though, f IGN. Hashtag false gamers. Overall, SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, no matter which version, gets the hit. And as always, thanks for watching. And remember, subscribing is an option, not a demand. Ugh, I'm starving. I think I'll phone order some Krabby Patties. Hi, is this the Krusty Krab? No! This is Patrick! Huh, must have dialed the wrong number.